Welcome back for a preview on the Big Block Chev TVS Supercharger System. We're at Dandy Engines, we've got Frank and Al from the Skid Factory. It's a great little partnership, but Al, let's start with the history on this engine. All right, so I picked up this engine in exchange for doing some work for a family friend. Uh, we didn't really know much about it. It was been sitting in this Holden Ute for about 10 years unused. So I just wanted a big block Chev because who doesn't? So uh, we didn't really know much about it. Had a little, bit of a look underneath. Uh, yeah, it looked like it had a fair bit of good gear in it. But um, so w we ended up talking to you guys and I, I, I had the idea of, oh, yeah, I want to put a supercharger on it because that's cool, but I don't want a chrome blower, which, you know, like your traditional blower with the carbies and that sort of thing, because I don't really like them. Uh, I like modern stuff. So having used the um, TVS Harrop superchargers on uh, Holden 308 before on our channel, we knew that they were like top quality and everything worked brilliantly. So that, that was kind of what I was up after. I spoke to the guys and they said, oh, no, there's no such thing as a non-chrome blower. And that was what I'd found as well. And I thought, that's ridiculous. Surely some people want modern supercharger technology on their big block chevs. So we ended up sort of going on a, I don't know, a joint venture, I suppose. I, I supplied the engine and these guys supplied the uh, supercharger know-how. And um, an idea was born. This, this is the prototype. So it's a um, pretty special looking thing. We did have a little bit of a problem along the way, though. We've been here for a, a day or so now, haven't we, Frank? And yeah. not all of it was spent dyno tuning a healthy engine. Before we get to that, <laughs> so the engine came down to Harrop and we did a whole lot of work. We scanned it, we did a lot of measurements, came up with the CAD design, and, and then we sent it back up to you to, to run through it and just sort of check what it was, put it together, and then it came back to us to, a I guess, finish assemble yeah. with a supercharger. And then we came down to Dandy Engines and met up with Frank yesterday morning who had it on the dyno, ready to go. So we thought. Well, <laughs> you know, it wasn't our usual running in procedure. Unfortunately, we had a camshaft snap. We don't have any reason for it. I, it's hard to pick why it happened. But the most important part is it didn't do any damage other than break a camshaft and a couple of lifters so we were very lucky to be able to pull the engine off the dyno. I think it was about three or four o'clock, diagnose that it was a broken camshaft, ring the local parts shop, buy some gaskets and, and another camshaft that probably wasn't the best choice for a blown engine, but it was the closest thing we could get. We started, I think, at 5, 36 o'clock machining and getting the engine on its way to being prepared for assembly. And I think we had a long night until 1 a.m., finished the engine, came back this morning, put it back on the dyno. I mean, the guys have traveled a long way, so it would, it would have been heartbreaking to end it, you know, knowing that it could have been fixed. It was no one's fault. It was just one of those things that parts fail, you know, and sometimes it happens when you least expect it. We got it back together and here we are, making some power. And huge credit to the Dandy Engines team, particularly yourself, who actually stayed here to, to screw it all together. But we had Brad do the cylinder heads. Bob we had, yeah, we had, we had Jake prepare a block and Michael and Gus go over the block and Brad went right over the cylinder heads and found some things that we could change that was more suited for the hydraulic cam. And Bob ground the crank at like 10 o'clock last yeah, night. Yeah, last <laughs> minute we decided to grind the crank because we, we probably thought, let's make it more interesting. And here we are, look, you know, good team effort, and we, the boys got to do, we got, we got to test at the blower the way we intended. And, uh, and now he's got a bit of a hot rod in his hand. So a little bit about the combination, uh, the camshaft and a shout out to Speed Pro, like they delivered parts to us at five o'clock. Yeah, they were, they yeah were I forgot closing, about that. And it was the only cam that we could actually get. So Correct. this engine without the supercharger, we didn't have the opportunity to run it naturally aspirated, but what would you typically see this combination? Oh, look, it's only a 454 with 10 thou oversized pistons. So that kind of camshaft, you'd be lucky if you made, I'd say 500 horsepower. And if you really went after it, you might you might see 550, but it's a hydraulic cam. It's not a, you know, it's not a roller cam and it's not a, a, a mechanical, yep. it's hydraulic. And it's fuel injected. It runs our drive-by-wire 110 throttle plate. So it's an LS style. And big thank you to NADS from FuelTech for getting everything set up to run today. We started out with relatively low boost, but 
where we're at now, we've got the 245 millimetre lower pulley. Uh, I think it's the 80 millimetre top. It's a three to one ratio. We saw in the end 20 psi. Um, we did rev it to seven, just over seven, which is probably pushing yeah. the friendship with that. <laughs> not, it's not a great thing to do to a hydraulic cam. You know, the graph was still climbing, and if we, you know, if we could turn it to 75 and know that we weren't going to have any dramas with valve float or any lifter floating, I think it still probably would have made power at 7,500. So on that last run, we saw just over 940 horsepower it's 750 foot-pounds all the way through the curve. And then we had a meeting in the control room around stock block. It's got, it's got a cast cap. We've got to be realistic. You know, at any point, a cast cap is trying to hold nearly 750 foot-pounds of torque. That's a lot to ask. So, Al, you made the call to say this is more than enough for what I need. Yeah, it, it's definitely more than enough for what, for what I want from the car. It, it is actually, it's not a race car, it's just like... A street car, which I know everyone says that, but it literally is just a Sunday well, cruiser. <laughs> it's, on pu it's on pump E85, so you can go anywhere you want with it. Yeah. And you've got 940 on tap. We just decided to call it at that, knowing that there's so much more in it, but not, maybe not in a block, so uh, it's probably the sensible thing to do. We can save that for another episode. Yeah. Sure. And from, from our point of view, uh, Justin and Clayton, our senior designers and engineers who did a lot of the work for this this package, we got what we needed. The supercharger is working very efficiently. The intercooler is is doing what it needs to do. We're only seeing, I think, upwards of a 20 degree delta across the full run at the end. Our 10 PK drive system. That worked flawless. And our tensioner, our billet tensioner has got more torque and travel than you see with a typical OEM tensioner and, and that's really what it needs. So even with some of the rapid D cells we saw when uh, the cam actually broke, the, the belt didn't, <laughs> yeah. didn't, didn't budge. Yeah. No. The ultimate and, test. And finding more power was the spark plugs were coming out like brand new. They haven't even burnt the CAD plating, which means that they've got no heat in them. We had more room to go leaner on fuel, more timing. So there's no doubt these things are going to be a weapon for an underbonnet, streetcar combination and i've had a walk around and see the number of engines that are in process i'm sure there's going to be a big block that comes through that is looking for an i'm sure we'll find one. someone who's not as we'll girly about, about it as i am <laughs> so stay tuned for that thanks for watching and we'll see you next time